Let's look at the stories making news in the newspapers before I introduce my guest. So, the Daily Graphic for today says, 34 perish in gory accident, President consoles bereaved families, and NLA resolves impasse with private sector operators. Amwabing Nyenaku charged with stealing and money laundering. And Ghana Beyond Aid Attainable uh, put shoulders to the wheel, President urges Ghanaians. And the back page says, Rice Millers cry for financial support and U.S. group donates computers to Liberty Avenue schools. And then the Daily Guy for this morning says, UT Beige bosses in court over 441 million Ghana cities fraud. 34 perish in accident. Okumkom is dead. And NLA Lotto operators resolve ampers. The back page, Akono appointed Black Stars coach and Dango Tewan's Arsenal takeover. And Kwesiatha rocks a crack stadium in Legon City's Ash Gold Clash. So, you know, Legon City is still engaged in uh, this kind of having, uh, uh, you know, music performances before their matches. And Sishin is new Barcelona boss. And uh, finally, the Ghanaian Times for today says, we'll put persons responsible for banking crisis before court soon. That's according to President. Well, he was speaking yesterday. And just after he finished speaking, they were put before court. Uh, or probably even before he finished speaking. 34 perish in gory crash. Two buses involved, 54 sustained injuries, and owners of two collapsed banks put before court for misappropriating over 200 million Ghana cities belonging to customers. And the back page says Adriana Ashgold winning streak under threat as 11 wonders and Legon City's threatened upsets. And 2019-2020 MT and FA Cup launched. Our guest for this morning and to my immediate Left is uh, Kofi Ameya, who's a member of the NPP's communication team. He was a uh, campaign spokesperson for the Stephen Eating campaign. That's passed now. And next in the middle is uh, Rodalina Ayana, who's a former vice chairperson of the Convention People's Party. And next to her is uh, Goring Eduji Tamaklo, who's a private legal practitioner and a member of the NDC's communication team as well as legal team. Gentlemen and lady, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I believe all of you are doing very well. Yeah. But for yeah, yesterday's so news. Yes, but for yesterday's news, and starting off with that bit, uh, briefly, uh, 34 persons uh, you know, perishing in that gory accident at Dompoise on the uh, very close to Commenda on the Cape Coast Takradi Road. Uh, we've been talking about how we can actually uh, ensure safety on our roads, but this is one that uh, initial reports we're gathering indicates that one was trying to overtake and met the other, and it resulted in the death of uh, 34 with some 54 injured. Kofi, briefly on this. Well, let me say a very good morning to you, uh, to your cherished um, viewers and to um, co-panelists here. Um, uh, yesterday was a very bad day for me personally and for the country uh, in general. I've lost two uh, family members within oh. the last month, so um, this month uh, has not been a good one. So yesterday when I heard the news, I was at home and I was just listening to the report and it appeared to be a very gory one. And, um, so I sympathize with the families and, you know, beyond just the people who have died, the people who have been maimed as a result of the accident, yeah. it's, it's, they are going to battle for their, their lives, for the rest of their lives. So it's extremely unfortunate that it had to happen. We don't have, or I personally don't have the details as to what exactly happened, but um, I will urge that we, we, we are extremely careful on our roads. Unfortunately, our roads are very narrow, extremely narrow, so when you're overtaking or when you're in a sharp curve and all of that, you have to be very careful how you are taking all of that. But uh, I wish we'd be more careful on our roads to avoid these deaths. Let me get to you, uh, Godwin Eduji Tamaklo. So uh, 34 persons, uh, you know, and uh, information we've gathered indicates that that particular area seems to be accident prone. And so uh, some time ago, about 43 persons also lost their life at that same venue. Uh, we seem to have been running lots of campaigns on how to ensure safety on our roads. It's an indication that we're probably not running the campaigns properly, or it's a case of persons just not being cautious when they drive. Okay, so once again, good morning to uh, my mom here and uh, my brother and your good self and our cherished viewers. Um, I believe that uh, beyond the campaign, the design of our roads typically we have a problem. I think that the talk sometimes becomes too much because there are clear structural defects with our roads. If you look at this particular accident, it was head-on yeah. collision. 
I mean, if you are, your roads that link major cities are not dualized, you are most likely going to have this thing repeat itself. You recall not too long ago around Kintampo, where the passengers got burnt. Yeah. It was the same head on collision because of the nature of our roads. So I think that until we all make a conscious effort to dualize all our major roads, we are most likely going to have this thing. Because you see, these roads are quite narrow. And so immediately one driver, whether he's tired, and you notice that most of these accidents, they happen 2 a.m., 12 midnight, yeah. 1, 3, 4. No matter how strong a man is, there's a time that your body will shut down. And so if you are just facing the other driver and he begins to doze off and veered towards your lane, because the lanes are so narrow, before you can say, Jack, you're already into the person. So these things, we know what the problem is. But it does appear that we unfortunately do not value human life. You understand? It's a bigger problem. We don't value human life. We don't. So human life has become, I mean, so, I mean, we're going to have a conversation, Kintampo, 50-something dead. We'll have talk, 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 the talk shows. Then we go, then Don Poise, another one, 32, lost. Then we'll have a conversation. Then we are going every day. We do not value lives. Because if not, I think collectively, all the political parties, we can even sign an agreement that of the several kilometers of roads that we have, under A, B, C, D, this stretch of road will be dualized, whether you like it or not. You dualize them. So that if we can do it small, 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 we'll be able to finish it up. Okay. Let me get to Rodeling. I mean, uh, Adi Jitamakulu makes that point about dualization. And uh, that would get me to a point of, you know, how if you look at the public investment division of the Ministry of Finance and our PPP arrangements, consistently we've been talking about the dualization of these roads. I mean, from Accra to Takrade, uh, dualization of, uh, from Accra to, you know, Kumasi, these roads that we believe that the traffics on the uh, station roads are huge. And so we should be dualizing them to ensure that at least uh, if somebody sleeps and he veers of the impact doesn't become severe. Of course, you should not be sleeping. If you're tired, you would have to take a rest. What's your take on all of this? Um, good morning to our viewers. Um, for me, it's a sad, it was a sad day also. I, I just couldn't. I, I had a passenger coming from Takradi, so I was really worried. I kept calling, are you, are you, you know, and he wasn't picking, and I was like, gosh, what could is happen? He, is he safe? He's safe. He, he, he was safe. So um, when we are talking about our roads and these accidents, um, the human error factor is also something that we must look at. Because these days we seem to have all manner of drivers on our roads. Um, and you'd ask yourself whether they're really being um, scrutinized properly um, before giving the, um, the licenses. And then you also look at even the places that they start from, the, the lorry stations. Um, how do we manage them? Because some of them would not have enough rest. They will still be driving, you know, knowing very well that they're going to go to long distances. Um, that also creates problems because at the end of the day, they don't rest. They are back on the, on the road and they fall asleep. Um, I'm also looking at the, the types of buses that we are having. Um, are we really getting the right kinds of buses for our terrain? Do you think we're getting the right kinds no, I, of buses? I, I, no, I think that, you know, it's not always we just buy any kind of bus. We should look at our terrain. We should look at, look at the ties even that they use. Some of their ties are so terrible. Um, you know, the way we handle uh, passengers is quite different from sometimes where these buses come from. Um, people travel with just a piece of luggage. We travel with bags and all manner of things. And then we put them all under there. And then we still have some at the top there. So even balance sometimes is a problem when you're overtaking someone. So it, it, it's something that we have to look at. Um, and the dualization is one thing that we have failed. We have to dualize some 
parts of this country, especially the major highways, Accra, Kumase, Kumase, Tamale, all those kinds of things, because that actually reduces the accident, you know, uh, figures. And the weather, 4.30 a.m., Hamatan conditions, visibility. Sometimes it's so poor, drivers ought to know better. And that's, that comes back again to, do we really scrutinize them? Because for me, sometimes I feel that some of the drivers on the road can't even see properly. It is difficult to see sometimes, yes, actually. I mean, it, it because, is. Uh, the roads, I mean, it's very dark <laughs> anywhere. Everywhere. everywhere. So you know, so you can imagine you have that see, defect yes. also of not mm -hmm. being able to see properly. So um, whatever it takes, we should look at our road designs. We should dualize <coughs> our roads if we can. We should mm -hmm. check the buses and check the people who are actually um, riding those buses. And um, I think we'll, we'll, we will then be able to curb some of these things. Okay. Yeah. Well, so uh, our condolences to you know the families of the bereaved. Um, it's a very sad one that 34 persons have lost their lives. But in moving on to other issues, and I'll start this one with you, um, uh, Aduji Tamaklo, because uh, there's been lots of talk about you know the president having or government having to take people on when it comes to the uh, you know the financial sector reforms and those who have. Uh, we felt might have done certain things wrong. There's always been that comment, why are you not taking them to court? Why are you not taking them to court? So yesterday at the opening of the 71st New Year School, the president talked about the fact that you know, some are in court and others were going to be in court. Well, uh, probably at the time he was speaking, immediately after that, um, Prince Kofia Mwabing and Michael Nyinoku were you know, taken to court. Um, what's your take on, on this particular issue? Would you now say that there are lots of the numerous calls uh, that came, that a government is now heeding to these calls and maybe doing the right thing? Okay, so <clears throat> I ordinarily should, uh, I don't have a problem as part of the state's powers in regulating the commission of crime, um, preventing say, if um, the government of the day decides to punish persons for wrongdoing. That's allowable by the laws of this country. I find the timing a bit more curious. And what is curious I, about the timing? And uh, I will explain. Um, if you look at the particular case of Mr. Uh, Prince Kofi Amwabin, you would recall that uh, Mr. Amwabin's uh, bank, UT Bank, had their banking license revoked on the 14th day of August 2017. Very important. The basis of the revocation of that banking license had to do with a report. My understanding is that by the time the license was revoked, government had done its investigation and had a legal basis to proceed to do whatever it did. Now, you have a situation where from August 2017 to date, until the president spoke at the New Year's school, then the matter was taken to court yesterday. And now if you read <clears throat> the chart sheet, a copy that I have, I'll just read it last end. The leadership of FASL attention was drawn to the transfer request and they denied it. Even challenged the amount in question, which far as it could, could, and then proceed. The case is under investigation. Very instructive. The, the attorney general instructs the police inspector to proceed to prosecute Mr. Mwabin after almost two years. Now, the matter is taken to court. Interestingly now, the circuit court. What is interesting about that? I mean, crimes of this nature and looking at the amount, it's always the high court. It's always the high court where you do it. Now, immediately I had to make some few inquiries. Why the circuit court? And I was informed that they said these are provisional. Okay. And that eventually they would have to do. And you note that it's the police. So oftentimes they may end up going for the, to the attorney general advice and what have you. So since you are not, just by way of uh, uh, mm -hmm. clarification and education, do you suspect that, uh, I mean, right from... August 2017 up until now, we haven't done a lot of investigations and we've just hurried no, this up. I, no, hold on. I am saying that mm -hmm. the charge sheet that was presented to the courts, mm -hmm. okay, 
The charge sheet itself says that the case is under investigation. <coughs> okay. Now, my point is that if the case is, in fact, under investigation, after two years after the revocation of the license, then there might be a reason why the case which is under investigation was hurriedly put before What could the be court. that reason? I don't know. And that is why I'm saying that I find this particular prosecution following the president's comments at the New Year school a bit more curious. And you see, I have always said, listen, there's nothing wrong if you decide that persons have committed offense and for which reason you want to prosecute them. We are all accountable to the laws of this republic. Accountability is not limited to Prince Amwabi, myself, and you. We are all accountable to sure. the laws of this republic. However, however, where it begins to look like prosecutions are being done in a manner that raises some kinds of suspicion, we must all be careful. What suspicion does this raise? Now, if you look at Mr. Nyinaku, because the two were yes. in court, all these two cases, the indication was that, and in fact, one of the reasons that my, my Lord, a judge, refused the bill to Mike Nyinaku was the fact that, among other things, the matter was still being investigated. Do you get my point? Yes. Now, I am making this case that, listen, if the matter, in fact, is still being investigated, then is it the case that our president finds solace, more or less, I mean, like how rich men, when they get to a certain point, they buy guns, go to a forest, kill animals, and it excites them. So that for politics, prosecution is now being weaponized for the purposes of political expediency. Are we called for their prosecution? No, hold on, hold on, hold on, please. The Attorney General's power under Article 88 is a power that must be exercised in a manner that one restores public confidence. Okay, in wrapping up. Yes, so I'll wrap up, among other things. But where the powers of the Attorney General under Article 88 is weaponized, it becomes problematic. And I recall gloriously, Nanado Dankwe Kufado in 2009, taking on then former president, may he so rest in peace, Professor Mills, and his then national security advisor, Major Nunu Mensa, who had gone on a public forum and said, uh, previous appointees will soon be prosecuted. Nanado Dankwe Kufado took him on and said, when you make comments like this and prosecutions flow, it then suggests that the prosecutorial powers of the Attorney General are being used either for political expediency okay. or to gain a certain political leverage. Let me get to uh, That becomes Kofi problematic. Amaya. Yes, Kofi. Winston. Um, yes, Kofi. You see, when we assumed office in 2006, <coughs> and even before that... You assumed office in 2017. 2017, sorry. Um, and even before that, we made it clear that there are fundamental problems in our financial sector. Indeed, um, the last State of the Nations I'll address... The, the, the last the State of the Nations uh, addressed by former President John Dramani Mahama, uh, page 20, it indicated that clearly um, we have challenges in our financial sector, so there's a need for us to sanitize that institution. So when we came to power, we realized that there's a need for us to really do something. And indeed, there was... Uh, uh, um, a, a, an asset quality review that indicated in 2015 and 16 that there are fundamental challenges in the banking sector, especially among some few banks, and that the alliance needs to be revoked. Today, I'm happy to submit to you again that lawyer here has admitted, of course, that that, that prima facie case has been established that indeed they did something on toward for that. No reason. prima facie. That will be determined by oh, the court. Okay. In the so the, the alliances were revoked, and that there were some uh, measures that punitive measures that also needed to have been taking place, including prosecuting them. Okay, it's been o almost over two years now. We've been talking a, about it. It's more than two years. Yes, more than two years. You see, 
we, we, we also do appreciate, there's a statement in this country that the rules of justice grind slowly, and we are, appreciate that fact. There's one thing I want us to appreciate in, in dealing and in, 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 in the midst of this discourse, that the president, Nana Redanko Ekufuadu, believes in the rule of law. He will ensure that the laws are followed to the letter, because at the end of the day, if somebody makes an application and kind of drags the system slowly, the person needs to do that because it falls within their, their remit to do let me, whatever. Let me get your view on what uh, you know. Uh, I, I will come to has raised about the, the curiosity. The, the, and, I was about you know, yes, to yes, making that about to get reference there. to what Akufuado said in two thousand and nine. Yes, See, it's extremely unfortunate when we subject and reduce the argument to this level. Okay, when we all appreciate that because you asked him a question and he was not able to answer you. What makes it curious? What oh, makes it speech. suspicious? Hold on. What makes the timing unfortunate, as it were? At the end of the day, the president, in his um, uh, Christmas message, made the point that moving forward, though we will see some prosecutions. And indeed, we've seen some pro prosecutions. I want somebody to establish to me today that the prosecution of these individuals were not done in a lawful manner. I, I want that point to be established, because the idea and the, the attempt to politicize everything in this country, to make some individuals look bad as if we are um, persecuted to them rather than prosecute, um, prosecute them is unfortunate. At the end of the day, did they fall foul of the law? Yes, they did. Did they do something untoward? Yes, they did. The courts will decide. Yes, I mean, as it were now. They have the opportunity to go to court. Yes. That process has not been halted. They've not been prevented from going to court. To, to, to seek the legal redress and all of that. They are doing so. Sometimes pass, you complain that you are not doing it. And, and sometimes you have some communicators, some individuals, sometimes even non-partisans. Yeah, but, but, that but, will but, make the point mm -hmm. that, okay, we are not seeing anything. Okay. Nothing is being done. To the extent that when something is being done, we are saying no. Is the it a case? Is bad. Would you it's say, suspicious. let me get your thoughts on this. So when a president makes a comment that says, Prosecutions are going to start soon, and immediately prosecutions begin. Mm -hmm. Does that amount to it being political? It's not political. The president, as the president of the republic, also has a social and economic responsibility in this country. And this issue has a social and economic responsibility. Because at the end of the day, remember, lots of Ghanaians, over mil millions of Ghanaians, whose deposits were in these banks. The receiver has sued them for recovery Exactly. Of these so funds. the president has a responsibility to ensure that they will take these individuals who have caused this harm to all these Ghanaians to go through the process to retrieve their money for them. So the government also has a responsibility. Hence, the president coming out to say, okay, at the end of the day, we are taking these steps. We've taken one step to ensure that we, we, we more or less form another bank as it were not to collapse it entirely, we also have taken steps to ensure that we prosecute them and make sure that at the end of the day, justice, the people whose monies were there, receive justice. So that's exactly what the president has done. And I don't think there's any political reason to it. There's any suspicion to it. What is there to it is that at the end of the day, the president is doing what is right to ensure that the good people of this country receive a good governance. That's exactly what the president has done. Okay. Let me get to you, Roger. No, you say, Winston, just one minute. One before, minute no, just mm. before my sure. mom comes in. Look, on the 26th day of May 2009, just for the record, mm -hmm. so we can situate the conversation, His Excellency today, then candidate Nana Kufuado, addressed a press conference at the Osu Ebenezer Presby Church, date 26 May 2009. Yes. And this is what he said on rule of law. Again, there is a the need to strengthen the rule of law. During the short term, of the Mills administration. There has been a lot of loose talk about taking people to court for political malfeasance and corruption. Indeed, recently, the National <coughs> Security Advisor, Brigadier Nunu Mensa, advised, announced that prosecutions were imminent. I've been for accountability all my life and will never waver in that commitment. But I am also equally for the rule of law and due process. My commitment to these bedrock principles is also not negotiable. I believe a person is presumed innocent until proven guilty by a court of competent jurisdiction. And that is why I will insist on the right of every accused person to fair trial 
before a properly constituted court. When plans for prosecution are announced, <coughs> when plans for prosecution are announced by the National Security Advisor, it appears that prosecutorial decisions are being made not by legal professionals, but, but by political operative with an ask to grind or scores to settle. Contest. The implications Contest. of such behavior for our democracy and legal systems are dangerous. So you say. Yes, but in context, but I mean, in contextualizing yeah. that, mm. he says it looks like you have no, so that's the point I made. But in this case, yes. in this case, yes. in this case, yes. you had been calling people, a lot of people had called for the prosecution of these persons. In fact, uh, the moment it happened yesterday, other names were being mentioned, and I am not one to go about mentioning mm -hmm. names mm -hmm. like this. So, uh, oh, why wouldn't he try this other person? Why wouldn't he try that other mm -hmm. person? Others should also be brought on board. So, it's more like people are calling for it, and what the president has only done is to tell you now, that so, I'm going so, to heed so to your calls. In the context, I would explain the context. I am happy. Taking yeah, just, no, so no, I'll come back. Yes. Well, I am happy. No, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I am happy that mm -hmm. the Attorney General, who is the sole source of authority for all prosecutions, had repudiated the position of the National Security Advisor. Let the President, who is a lawyer, condemn such loose talk and ensure that during his tenure, the frontiers okay. of our freedom and respect for the rule of law will be expanded and not diminished. I would have appreciated this point Thank you, that <laughs> call for prosecution that's had come from the Minister of National Security. No, that's, that's Nanado. We need to, right we need to get uh, really into the conversation. That's Nanado. Hold, that's on. Hold on, gentlemen. So I allowed him because it was now. by way of information. Rodeling, your, your, your take on this. Well, I, I, was, um, I don't have any problem with them being sent to court. Okay. Um, I felt that um, the people who had invested in their various banks deserved to at least get some justice. Um, I don't also know if they have political colors. I just know them as two bankers, people who owned banks that have gone wrong. Um, it's interesting because there were other people. And you see, one, once we are dealing with people and uh, perceptions, and people feel like this person belongs to this group, and this <coughs> other group belongs to that group, it becomes rather difficult as a people when one group is pushed before courts and the perceived other group is still not being seen. Maybe in the next few days we will see other people. The president says investigations are yeah, so maybe in the next and few as and when we will they have see, enough evidence, they take them to we'll, court. We'll see those other people. But um, looking at the fact that um, we've had to spend so much money um, in clearing this supposed mess and um, now having to have these people go to court, for me, sounds good. What we, we would expect is that there should be fair trials for all and that all who have been involved should also be brought to book. At the end of the day, already the persons who had their monies and their investments with these people have lost out because for the last two years or so they've not been able to get their monies. So um, it would... But with the banks, they've gotten uh, well, an appreciable amount. If you, if, you, if you go and you have maybe 700,000 and you're giving 20,000, you haven't gotten anything. Well, that's with the uh, savings with the, and loans. And, and, and loan but, but, but with the universal banks, you know, well, uh, if you did investments with them and some of these uh, fixed deposits, you're giving huge percentages. You're told that I beg. You have to reduce. We have percent. to reduce the interest yeah, rates so that you you're know? paid, and, and it's better when your <laughs> it's better principal, than nothing, yeah? you know, will that's tally good, with um, that's the mark of a good government. Yeah, so for me, yeah, so yeah, all I can say is yes, that yes, um, I, all I can say is that well, it's a good move. Let's rope in all the others. Let's let everybody have their day in court. Let's not be selective, um, and, and and let's get this this whole thing wrapped up quickly. It's unfortunate that it has to come. Um, during this time. And, you know, it sounds a bit weird because um, we've had political pundits mentioning, oh, we will bring them to book. I, I even heard somebody say, oh, by March, you know, by March 2020, we are going to start prosecuting them. Uh, it started in It started, in yes. You see, so it, then it, it sounds a bit too political. Because when you hear So that, you agree with that digital market? Oh, yes, I, I agree with him in, to who, some who, extent. Who said that? But it's taking a political twist. It's, Government has always been and there. And that is it. Take you them see? to court. Take them to court. So... Would you fault them? No, that's what I'm saying. You're only I mean, heeding to your call. I'm just hoping that, that I'm just hoping that 
the rest of the people, like I said, the perceived other group will also be brought on board. Okay. That's my main Why? Why? <laughs> Winston, you see, I think oh. that sometimes, let's be fair, you mm. coming, let's be fair here. Why? When Anas did his investigation mm. on the Galamse fight, mm. persons who work at the presidency were implicated, including Charles Bissu. Correct. Mm -hmm. There had been calls for prosecution. What has happened? Okay, that's for that's see, another see, conversation. So please, most so that, that is what that, that is what I'm saying. Let's not let's not get into that. We need to stop. You see, you are premising your no, case on no, the basis no, that they had no, been caught. This is not fair. Yeah. No, but, because no, but, for but, an attorney general, so, they can so, be caught. So, but if you do not find evidence that can stand scrutiny, you cannot say because they have been caught. So once there are hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So my question and my point was simply: I'm not part of the discussion. I'm moderating. Is the fact that if there are calls. And somebody heats the call. <laughs> how? I mean, why would you say so that why is political? You know, that's not the only that is not for me to answer. So let me get to <laughs> Kofiyama. <laughs> I can't answer that this question. The, the yes, answer. briefly on this, because we need to move on to our final yeah. issue. Yes. Okay. So you see, that's the problem. This country will continue to have with the NDC. You ask uh, the whole country you, has a problem with. Oh, the of course, because of this that? attitude, you I, ask for something to be done, and not just because it so needs it has to be done, but it needs to be done. The attempts are made to for it to be done, then yet you come and sit here and complain and justify and, and, and try to just oppose it against other issues that are still in But there's court. been other calls. You, of course. You wouldn't see that there's been he's other a lawyer. He's a lawyer. He, he's a lawyer. Okay. Okay. It's not just because he's a lawyer. I've seen him in court before. Mm -hmm. The issue of the mass lock. I was in court and I saw him. But he's a lawyer. And he understands and appreciates. There are cases in this country that have taken years. Yes, not just a year or two, but decades. He's okay. aware of that. So he should stop making that comment and okay. make sure the system works. So let's stop move on. Stampeding the institutions. Selectively. Right. Let's, <laughs> stop let's, let's, the let's move on. Let, let's move on to other issues. So, um, you know, the Daily Graphic talks about Ghana beyond aid being attainable, and we should put our shoulders to the wheel. Uh, the president urging Ghana. That was at the New Year School. But um, if you also look at, um, you know, some of the other stories, the president also talked about how. Uh, are the results fair? How he's done very well. His government has done very well, and uh, they've done so well in three years. They've uh, they inherited a system that was so uh, poor, and thus should be commended for doing very well. And I'm starting off with you, Kofi. These are things we keep trumpeting. The president, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the MPP has been the apostles of Shewa Sitinimna Tuabapa. However, over the last year or so, we have been very much concerned about the figures. We've used figures to say, for instance, that a country is doing well. Beyond the figures, how do we measure the well-being? Shouldn't you be looking at maybe the living standard survey to say, this is an indication that people are doing well, rather than just throwing out uh, GDP is grown by this rate, inflation has gone down by this rate, inflation that is averagely measured in some parts of the country could be very high, and so people would just not feel it. We're running an average uh, you know, statistical campaign and saying that is an indication that a country is doing well. Okay. How's that a mark of well-being? It is, because when you have a gross domestic product that has doubled, it means that the standard of living of the people has also doubled. It doesn't necessarily add up. It, 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 it does. You see, uh, sometimes we try to trivialize these indicators, but they are very important. They are the benchmark for which you measure your well-being and your welfare. But besides that, let me go to the broad issues. At the result fair, which is to ensure that citizens engages the various ministries and to know what exactly government policies and programs are or where, and the implementation levels. So that's, and mind you, um, between um, July 9th to 17th, um, Ghana had the opportunity. Um, you said I spoke for in team. Um, now I'm the head of information for Ghana's permanent mission to the United Nations. So sure. I was there when um, you know Ghana's um, Ghana was represented at the UN under the auspices of the Economic and Social Council (ECOSA) where we submitted a voluntary national review report on the implementation of the 2030 uh, Agenda for Sustainable Development. That is where we were able to showcase what we have done in terms of our 16th flagship program. So what happened yesterday, and I think it will take up to um, the next two days for it to be finished, um, was to showcase and tell Ghanaians what we have been able to do. And it was there that the president mentioned that indeed within the three years we have done what well. We have done well against the backdrop of the fact that one, when we assumed office in 2017, 
our budgetary lines, which consisted of um, making sure um, we pay salaries and wages, amortization and interest payments, and then statutory payments, were 105% of government revenue. So that means that 5% we have to go and struggle. So we didn't even have the fiscal space to do other things. Again, there were also other debts, including the energy uh, sector legacy debts. That was about 10 billion. The national health insurance, which was about 1.2 billion. The second tier pension uh, scheme was also owing about 2 billion. There were other debt as well. Then there was also the IMF program, which we had to finish because the government couldn't fulfill the benchmarks or the target that were given to them by the IMF. So we had challenges. At the end of the day, as we speak now, you ask yourself, why do we say we have done more in three years? Indeed, we have <coughs> doubled the um, uh, GDP, as I told you, because for the worst in the history of this Fourth Republic, when we, at some point in 2009, we were 9.3 percent with GDP. And even in 2014, or 2011, actually, we were 14 percent. We nosedived to 3.6, the worst. As we speak now, average... But at 14 seven, percent, you would agree that it was because we had started the commercialization of, of oil. So it the, pushes everything up. We, and, and, and we couldn't and even Automatically, if you get to 14.4 percent, okay. the next year, you would come down. Okay, if you should come down... Yes. Okay, for the next five years, you shouldn't go as low as 3.6 percent. But when we came, we've doubled it. We are talking about an average of 7 percent. We've, we've reduced inflation from 15 percent to 7 percent. That's what we have done. Last we, year was around 6.8%. Yes, we are doing better at the end of the day. I'm comparing to what we, 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 took, we took from. So, at the, so when the president said, when, then we, we, you see, we premised our manifesto on five thematic areas. One, to ensure good governance. And in good governance, we have done. That is when we have made sure that this interoperability is working. The paperless system is working. Digital addressing system is working. And all this digitization going on. It's a mark of the good governance we promised the good people of Ghana. We promised them a free secondary education. We have implemented it even in our first year. We told them we would move the management of the economy from taxation to production. And that's exactly what we did when we came to power. We also told them that at the end of the day, we would transform the economy through the modernization. Talking about production, to, talking about production. Of, the IMF is, I mean, you moving the economy from taxation to production. The IMF is asking you to introduce new taxes, okay. lest you find yourself in a challenge. Thanks be to God, we are not under the tutelage of the IMF anymore. We are a country that can decide on our own because at the end of the day, we are managing the economy It doesn't better. mean that you don't okay, take Okay, we told the good people of this country that we will modernize agriculture, and that's what we have done with the planting for food and jobs. Okay. We also told them, <clears throat> and the last point, mm -hmm. where I, I take a lot of interest from, that we will make Ghana attractive, and indeed we have done that. When you look at what happened last year with the year of return, and then beyond the return, what will be going on? So at the end of the day, what we promised the good people of this country, we have delivered. For that reason, we need four more to do more. Let me get to Rhoda Ayana. Uh, the president says, uh, you know, he's done more, he's done very well, fantastically in three years. And he thinks that he should be giving an additional four years. He also talked about uh, the Ghana Beyond Aid being attainable, based on what you see, based on what has been done in the last three years, and based on the plans that government says it's putting in place first, do you think they've done very well? Two, do you think that based on the plans that have been put in place, the Ghana Beyond Aid is attainable? Are we on the right course? Um, he's done well. Big question. Yes. He says, he says <laughs> 307 ambulances are in. He's going to be distributing yeah, them on the and, 28th um, of January. He's talked about, uh, you know, uh, 58 factories under the one district, one factory. Additional uh, 181 see, at various stages of uh, construction. He talks about one village, one dam. It's good to all have all these things on paper. It's very good. Paper. It's they very good to have them uh, on paper. Kofi, hold on. Okay. Kofi, hold on. Sorry. I was quiet Sorry. listening yes. to you. Um, I would want to know the manufacturing factories that uh, are out there, what they have produced. I'd want to be shown where they are being sold. Or exported to Ekunfi? apart from a kumfi. No, let me let me let me let me get my, my point right. Oh, let, 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 let me, let me get my point. Because you see, you promised something. Um, as for one district, one factory, you said it was going to be um, driven by the private sector. So understandable. But now you've taken over it. 
mm -mm. you know yeah somehow you've taken over now it's no longer a private sector driven thing because at the end of the day you go in there you give money to people people who've already done their factories you go and give them money and then you take over it that's your factory yeah, that's because there's an explanation to that the uh, agi and the ghana chamber of commerce and industry so that's fine came to government the government so that's fine. Yes, so that's how fine. many jobs have been created in those factories how many because that was one of the major things we're going to create these factories in order to create jobs. Let me just put out the numbers and the jobs that have been created. Well, over 300,000. <laughs> no, those it, numbers. They, they don't add up to 300,000. They cannot add up to 300,000. You see, you keep flaunting. They, they keep flaunting ahead, figures ahead, at us. It's not up to Look, oh, we have oh, oh, the cost oh, of living oh, is oh. high. The cost of living is high. Fuel has gone up. Utilities have gone up. Um, you're lucky if you're getting um, consistent electricity. As I speak, I haven't had water in my house for one week. Um, you go to the market and it's the same cost of things are really on the high ascendancy rent is nothing to write home about and at the end of it all every day when you wake up people are being dislocated from their various slums we have not provided social housing and we are kicking our people out from where they live at the end of it we're saying that we're doing well then you tell me that you're doing free shs fine there are challenges we all accept that but at the end of the day, are we really getting that free education with quality? Because I am, I am just looking at the situation where children are going to school, yes. Some, even basic school. Basic school students went to school with no textbooks for about a term. And we're being told that the teachers should go with their handbooks. We're looking at the medical, the health facilities that are available. Well, we brought ambulances. And I'm asking, those ambulances are going to be going to hospitals and chip compounds and health centers. How many have we built? How many have we really stocked and built? And then we have nurses crying out there that they're looking for jobs. And that there are some clinics that do not even have the right numbers of nurses. And then you're looking at the road sector that we have and those ambulances. Ambulances go together with the roads. This is supposed to be the year of roads. You're going to let out those ambulances onto those bad roads so you call up an ambulance. The ambulance will take forever to get there. And that sick person goes into that ambulance, shaky, 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 on that road. By the time it gets to the nearest hospital that you have not built, what happens? So there are certain things that when we, when, when we come out and say we are doing well, apart from putting it on paper for the, the outside world to, mm. to see, because that is what I think most of our governments do. Okay. They always come out with things that they would want the international community to hear or to see. We are talking about us. If you tell me you've doubled GDP and I don't see it in my pocket, I don't see it in my home, I don't see it at my workplace, you've done nothing. You've only put it on paper for, for the international community to see and say you are doing well. Okay. Let me get to the digital market. You have the final word on this. Yes. yes. Oh, and, I don't get a response. Um, it depends if we have more time. Okay. Oh. So, quickly on this one, I think that my friends in the MPP have their own world they are living in, regrettably. And sometimes you want to believe that it's only the communicators. But it does appear that the <coughs> problem starts from the very top. Our president says he has done well. Look, as we speak, on the 12th day of January, 2020. There's a news item on Ghana Web. I just want to read just the top, mm. which is more a neutral position than the two of us. And it has to do with Unilever. Yeah, Unilever. The Their economic or financial position. And the story is Unilever records huge revenue loss in third quarter. And when you read the story further, it says, quote, the banking sector cleanup that hit Ghana a few years ago has been listed as a key factor in low sales at the country's largest producer and retailer of consumer goods. He has done well. It proceeds, many distributors finding it increasingly, increasingly difficult trading. Nanado has done well. The economic climate in Ghana has seen a slowdown especially in trading conditions, particularly after the banking sector reform, which began in third quarter 2018. Nanado has done well. Look, now, if you pick basic items, and for me, I want this conversation to be at the micro level so we can have a better precision. Look, today as we speak, never in the history of this country have we seen within the space of three years 
monumental increase in fuel price. Never. And you know that any time you increase fuel price, the person's actual income that he expends will definitely be affected. Even you, the common live streaming of this program for people to partake in this democratic experiment, the cost of data has increased. And Nanado says he has done well. Taxes that businessmen and others pay, even you and I, have increased. And so when a government promises that they are going to take the economy, okay, from, uh, from taxation to production, and then you now have this economy moving from taxation to more taxes to more taxes, you must be curious. My friend says that when they came, they saw significant arrears mm. and they had to pay. First of all, in the eight years rule of the NDC from 2009 to 2016, the volume of resources that came to the NDC amounted to 248 billion Ghana cities. Fact. And Baumia usually said it. Within the space of three years, as we are going forward, the envelope of resources, including taxes and borrowing, by the Nanado Danko Ekufu Ado government, amounts to 210 billion. Now, there's a quotation in the Bible that to whom much is given, much is what? Some of which have been used to say. Hold on. Rest. So I'm coming. Mm -hmm. I'm coming there. Before John Dramani Mahama left, he envisaged that one, we, we, the power crisis that we had, so he resolved the problem. And Bamiya himself said, John Mahama deserved no credit for fixing Dumso. So there's no debate about who fixed Dumso. Two, John Mahama, please. John Mahama Continue. came and noticed mm -hmm. that one of the biggest problems we've had with the energy issue is mm -hmm. the question of capacity okay. and finance. You have a minute to go. And so, oh, please, you gave him to tout. Five minutes. So it's the same minute. <laughs> tout I, the I mean, check, check No, 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 please. please are not, but you let me just yes. proceed on it. What, when we came, we form what became known as ESLA, the Energy Sector Levies Act. Do you know that within this space of time, ESLA alone had given this administration six billion Ghana cities. But for the visionary leadership of John Mahama, this was a tax that they described as nuisance taxes and that with the benefit of power, they will scrap it. As we speak, within the energy sector alone, crude oil, oil and gas, the amount of revenue given to this administration alone amounts to 12 billion Ghana cities. Now, you claim that you have done free SHS. The overall cost of free SHS, as we speak, is just 4 billion. So okay. if you have gotten, mm -hmm. even from petroleum alone, 12 billion in terms of taxes, revenues, royalties, and everything. So, and you have even used up for, my time No, is no, up. I'll just wrap up. I mean, obviously, up. we'll have this conversation. Yeah, our time is up, yes. So when you pick the scorecard of this administration, beyond the incompetence, beyond the profligacy, and the corruption, you have seen that the scorecard today is showing that this administration that had today destroyed so many businesses should not be given another four years. Thank you very much, Governor Digi Tamaklu. Thank you very much, Rodalina Nayana. And thank you also, Kofi Amaya. Uh, that's our time on allows it. But just by way of... Uh, you know, information. So, Adi Jitamaklu, you're talking about Unilever uh, recording losses. That could also, some would say, that could also be because people had looked for alternatives. They have recorded oh, losses. No, 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 that could also know, be because of uh, alternatives. No, 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 the story says they have clear. recorded losses. I've seen it. I've seen it. The report is clear. You are talking about what but on that Let us not speculate. On that note, on that note, let us not speculate. 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 Let us not speculate.